uh, today is to consider the forward work programme and to consider the draft report on GSMI, to receive legal advice from our Assembly Legal Services and to receive a briefing into the Inquiry Account NI Review of Public Sector Financial Shared Service Centre and to conduct our preparation services for the Account NI Evidence Session which will take place here next week. I welcome you all to our meeting today and uh, can I ask again members to um, turn off your mobile phones and electronic devices with the exception of your tablets. Um, hands are they do sometimes um, it's insufficient to have them on silent as they do continue with the hands art. Um, members I have not received any uh, apologies. Um, Alex and Sean may be delayed. Do you members have any other apologies? Apology for last week. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Michael. That's recorded. Sure. Uh, I yeah. will have to leave pretty early. I have an emergency that I, I need to attend to, so okay. I will have to leave. Okay, and a number of members have indicated that they have to leave early also today, so see how that affects the meeting later on. Um, members, agenda item three under matters arising. You will be aware that members of the committee we did attend a residential on Monday and Tuesday of last week in the Tully Lagan uh, Hotel. This was in accordance with uh, our own development work here within PAC and with the strategic objective set out by the Chairperson's Liaison Group um, from October 2012. Um, so again, the aim of the programme was to review the work of the committee at a strategic level and to monitor and implement the review and its effective scrutiny programme. So the participants considered how well the Tully Lagan protocols established in the previous year had been implemented and how they could be built upon within the coming 12 months. Um, I mean, we all find this uh, exercise very beneficial and a full brief in the programme and the strategic proposals will be presented to the committee at our meeting of the 29th of January. Are members content to discuss that at our meeting on the 29th of January? Yeah, okay. Uh, members, under matters arising, a number of initial points will be considered in open session and the remainder will be, disclosed, will be discussed in, in closed session. So um, I'll inform you when we're going to closed session. Oh, I didn't do the minutes, sorry, apologies. Um, the minutes of the meeting, of, of our last meeting, are on page five of your packs. <coughs> members are content, I'll sign them into yeah, the record. Agreed. agreed. Okay, members. Um, we have correspondence in relation to the recovery of advanced land purchase by DSD. In uh, your packs at page 11, our brief on papers received by the deputy chairperson in relation to the recovery on advanced land purchases made by DSD to Trinity Housing Association in 2008. This correspondence is quite extensive, so a synopsis has been provided. Deputy Chairperson, would you like to give the committee some background on this? Oh my goodness. Uh, Ma Madam Chairperson, I uh, met with, uh, um, what do you call the man, Nesbitt? Is it Mr Nesbitt? No. Uh, Mr Nesbitt? Uh, Mr Nesbitt. <laughs> and he went through in great detail, in a very logical manner, uh, a, a number of issues relating to the Trinity Housing Association and without passing any judgment on it he did seem certainly to make a, a very interesting case for some further investigation into what exactly happened and uh, I would ask the uh, Committee on Balance you know, to take it on board uh, because I think that it would, be, it would be useful for the committee, at least, to see what, what the issues are, what the concerns and what possible uh, issues that need to be addressed. I understand that the controller and auditor general is also aware of this. So, having just met Mr Nesbitt in my office briefly for about half an hour or so, I was convinced that the thing didn't merit 
uh, did warrant merit to, uh, to look at further. Okay, thank you, Deputy Chairperson. Uh, you're, you're very welcome, yourself and Richard. Um, you've already mentioned this item in your annual report. Is there anything you want to add? Yes, uh, I did mention this item in my general report on last year's accounts, um, and uh, it relates to um, grant awarded to Trinity Housing Association, 835,000. It goes back to 2008, um, and it was on the assumption that there would be planning permission for 12 social housing units in Cross Gower. Uh, in the intervening period, uh, the Housing Association was unsuccessful in getting planning approval, uh, and uh, the proposal changed from a 12-unit scheme to a three-unit scheme. Uh, my report indicated that DSD was minded uh, to begin recovery procedures uh, for the grant of 835,000. Uh, Mr. Dalat has mentioned uh, representations from Mr. Nesbitt, and uh, Mr. Nesbitt has also been in touch with us, uh, and we're making further inquiries into the, into the case. Okay, thank you, Kieran, for that. Um, John, do you want? Are you content with? The oh, no, it's, you work? know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy if we, if I have the goodwill of the, the committee. And the endorsement of the uh, controller and all the general. So, uh, when these further inquiries are complete, I can mm. report back to the committee. Thank you. And members, just to note, there's a full set of uh, papers that have been submitted to the deputy chairperson. It's available for members to read um, in the committee <coughs> office if anybody wants to read the full set of it. Okay, members, moving on. Thank you, Kieran. Um, we have correspondence from DFP the monitoring of the post-project evaluations, and they're at pages 13 to 21 of your pack, uh, where you'll find correspondence received from the DFP committee <coughs> in relation to the monitoring of post-project evaluations. Um, members, that's at 13 to 21. Are members content to note this correspondence? Or, Kieran, do you want to add anything in your um, perspective on this return? Very little to add, except the, the number of outstanding post-project evaluations is up slightly, uh, but DFP now tracks this on a quarterly basis, whereas when the committee first looked at this a number of years ago, there was a huge backlog, mm -hmm. so uh, the problem has been contained and I think is under control, notwithstanding the slight increase since the last quarter. Members, just to note, it's, it's normal practice for letters of this nature to be considered by the committee each time we receive them. Would members be content to consider these by exception in the future? Mm -hmm. the so, any time that um, maybe Kieran represents a, a particular concern about the quarterly return? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, That's that we would hear it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, members, uh, we also have correspondence from the Treasury Office of Accounts, the Memorandum of Reply on Invest NIE's performance review. Um, we've received uh, further correspondence from Fiona Hamill, the Treasury Officer of Accounts, in regards to the additional information that was requested in relation to the MOR on Invest NIE. Um, this is at page 22 of your PACs, members. We just want to have a brief look at that. <coughs> Does any member have any comments that they would like to make on, on the reply? Or are we content to note the correspondence? I don't see anything. Here. To note it, yeah, okay. Okay, members. Um, <coughs> yeah. Kieran, do you want to, have you seen the reply uh, from Ms. Hamill? The reply, as well as the, the background to this was um, Invest and I used to have a, a target to actually narrow the, you know, the productivity gap uh, between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. And uh, the committee had recommended uh, that that target should be reinstated. 
there's quite a detailed rationale given here as to why Invest thinks that that's no longer appropriate and um, the emphasis now on, I suppose, increasing exports as opposed to productivity. Uh, you know, so uh, it has clarified where, what the position is. Yes. Okay. Michael? Okay, this might sound off the wall, but one of the targets that they've put is increase the level of exports and external sales as a proportion of Northern Ireland output. What's the relevance of it being a proportion? Would it not be better in concentrating on increasing it actually? Because if you increase something as a proportion, you can actually claim to have increased when it's actually decreased. Uh, well, that's an interesting point. Uh, if, if you, it depends what they're balancing it against. Uh -huh. But if you, if you describe something as increasing as a proportion, you can say that with a degree of accuracy. But if that you're, what you're comparing it to is actually decreased, you can disguise a decrease. Yes, uh, uh, I think that's an excellent uh, point. Uh, for, for the, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, for the target to work, then uh, out, more than I, I, our output. I would like both figures. What it was last year, or then the last time, what it is now, and we can then work out if it's an increase or a decrease, and then we can disguise it with all the proportions they like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the one we can come back to. Come back to him. Yeah, content. Okay. Okay, members. Um, last piece of correspondence. Yeah. Um, the last piece of correspondence is from Dr. Andrew McCormick on the safety of services provided by the HSC trusts. Uh, it's a PAC update. Uh, we have received this correspondence from Mr McCormick regarding the MOR on the recommendations that were made in the PAC report into the safety of services provided by HSC. Uh, Dr McCormick has written to us to request an extension to the six-month deadline uh, for an update to be given to the committee. He has requested that this extension be to the end of January in order to allow for more information from the most re recent Trust's accountability meeting of the 14th of January, um, so to be included in his submission to the committee. So he's a recent meeting and he's, and he's looking just to update us on, from that meeting. So I think we can all agree to, that that's okay and we'll give him that extension. Okay, members, are we... So we're content to move on. Um, before we go into closed session, um, I'd like to welcome uh, Professor David Heald, who's with us in the public gallery today. And, and uh, Professor Heald is from Aberdeen, Aberdeen University, am I right? Yes. Um, who, and um, he's here with Kieran Donnelly, the Auditor General today. So myself and the Deputy Chairperson met him today prior to, to this uh, committee meeting. And I have to say, very influential in your thought and your research and it was very interesting the discussion that we had. Um, we do, we are going into closed session now. Um, there is a part of the closed session that will involve some legal advice um, but I would be asking members as would it could, with permission could Mr Heald stay in to some of the part, part of the closed session but obviously not the legal advice um, for members happy enough? Yeah, okay. Thank you, members. Thank you. So now we'll move into closed session. <laughs>